There's really only one word that can accurately sum up my thoughts on this film. Blood. <laughs> 300 Rise of an Empire is a sort of sequel, not really a sequel, not really a prequel. It takes place in the middle of the timeline of the original 300. Men screamed there was lots of blood and boobs and blood and boobs and abs and blood and boobs and abs and men screaming and lots of blood. That's basically what 300 was and it was a good time. It was a lot of fun. Some people really loved that movie. I wasn't a diehard fan of the movie where I loved it so much, but I did enjoy it and I did have fun with it and I thought it was a good manly time at the movies. This new one is very similar to the first one in style, in substance. Basically, it's the exact same type of stuff that's going on and it's done with just about as much skill. In this movie, this dude Themistocles is going against the Persian army and Artemisia, played by Eva Green, as well as a man turned god who was in the first 300. In this film, you get a little bit more backstory about him and how he got to be the way that he is. And this movie is surprisingly better than I thought it was going to be because even though I enjoyed the first 300, something about this one just looked really bad. There wasn't really that one star in the movie that I could latch onto, that I felt I had some connection from the first one. It seemed like it was a different story. Then it got pushed back way farther than its original release date. And so there were a lot of bad things with this movie that just looked like it wasn't really going to be that good, but it actually was a lot of fun. There's lots of blood, there's lots of battles, there's lots of slow-mo to fast-mo, but the reason it didn't bother me as much in this film is because this is the movie franchise that got that started. The original 300 really went forth with that fast-mo, slow-mo thing where everyone's going really fast and then like, you know, it's basically what a lot of this movie is like. The original 300 popularized that filmmaking technique, but since then it's kind of become overused, like in January with The Legend of Hercules, and so there is an aspect of this movie that feels dated in the way it's filmed, even though it's within the franchise that started it. It would be like if a new Matrix film came out and they were doing all the bullet time effects, it wouldn't be as interesting or as visually revolutionary as it was the first time around. And that's what happened with Reloaded and Revolutions. You're like, yes, we've seen this before. It's never going to be as interesting as the first time. And this film suffers from that because that inventive visual style that 300 used is now kind of old, and so it doesn't really feel as interesting in this film, even though I can accept that it's there because it's all done very well. The CGI is convincing enough, even though you know that basically everything in the background is CGI. The guys are good with their stunt work, and the men are good at screaming, and that's really what you come for. You come to see men slicing open stomachs and heads and everything, and my goodness, that is definitely present. There is a lot of blood in this movie, and I'm sure that fans of that will not be disappointed. That being said, the main hero in the movie was kind of disappointing. I didn't really feel much for him. I thought that he was kind of a boring character. He wasn't very interesting as a person, and he basically gave a lot of really good battle speeches, and was cool to watch in battle. By far, the most interesting character, and the one that I enjoyed looking at the most, was Eva Green's character. I thought she had a great backstory. You actually kind of felt for her as a villain once you learned about the things that she went through, and you kind of understood why she is as evil as she is, even though she does that cliched kill members of her own army thing where it doesn't really help you when you do that. You know, I know you have a lot of people at your disposal, but killing them all when they make mistakes doesn't actually help. Overall, 300 Rise of an Empire is a suitably entertaining movie. If you are a humongous fan of the first 300, I'm sure you'll find things to enjoy here. If you just thought the first one was entertaining, I'm sure you can watch this one and still feel the same way. The main hero is not as interesting as in the first 300. He's a little bit boring, but he is good in the action scenes, and he's not a bad actor. He does a good job with what he's given. It's just that as a character, I wasn't really that invested in him. There's a lot of good backstories for other characters, though, like Eva Green's character, and it has a very good musical score as well. It's a fun movie to look at. There's lots of blood, lots of swordplay. It's nowhere near as good as the first one, but it is still an enjoyable time, and it's better than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to give 300 Rise of an Empire a B-. So guys, what are your thoughts on the first movie or the second one? How do you think they compare? Let me know below, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized. manized. <laughs>